Hi, welcome. My name is Dr. Norm McVeigh, CoherentCoachingInstitute.com. Today we're going to work on an issue called looking good. And uh, we'll get more into how that is. But uh, this is an energy tapping session. And you're welcome to tap along with me as I do this. You can also put your left hand on the speaker uh, of your computer. And these videos and audios are encoded with the white light energy that I've developed. It helps release these uh, subconscious content a lot more quickly. So I've been doing this for about 35 years. I've been training coaches and therapists and such like that. I'm author of the book Coherent Coaching, which is a training program in how to become a hundred times more effective coach or therapist or healer, etc. I also use heart rate variability, biofeedback equipment in my sessions. So you can also, by the way, you can put your left hand on the speaker and tap with your right. And that will work very fine also. Okay, the louder you turn the video, the more you'll amplify the energetic field. So I'm really pleased to have you here. I'd like to have you make an agreement with me, otherwise we really can't do the work together. It won't work. Okay, and the agreement is to be 100% responsible for your own experience. And if you feel you can't do that, then, or if you're under psychiatric care and you feel that could be a problem, or even if you feel, it, it, even if you feel it's not, this is a time to, you know, sign off and you know, work with some other programs and such. If you feel you can take 100% responsible, responsibility and you're willing to, then stay tuned and let's, keep, let's work together. Okay, so I hear your voice and you hear mine and so uh, I know you've made that agreement. I really thank you for doing such. Okay, so what's, what's looking good about? Well, I discovered this as an issue. Actually, uh, a guy named Werner Erhard uh, pointed this out in the S training back in 1972. And I didn't really fully get it then, but I sure do now. And uh, it's called looking good. And looking good is when you are, your devotion and your focus is on people perceiving you looking good. You don't, you know, it's hard for you to admit to your mistakes. You don't want people to see any side of you that seems to uh, contradict the looking good. You'll, you're kind of always posing. And you're posing so that you'll be perceived in a particular manner rather than naturally being yourself. And it truly comes from a, from a self-defeating attitude because only a person that was worried about looking bad would ever have to try to look good. You know, the, the, the other side of that looking good is looking bad. And that's, none of us want to do that you know, in, our, in, our, you know, in any way, shape, or form. But sometimes you have to deal with looking bad before you actually look authentically good. And we're interested here in authentically looking good, not just looking good as a pretense. We're not interested here in using force, effort, and pretense to look good. It's just a manipulation, and sooner or later you're, you're going to get caught. It's going to take so much effort and energy, it's just not really worth it. It's better just to confront and deal with and release looking bad. And that way you can look good naturally as a natural outcome of the magic of being yourself. So that would be the best way to do it. And that's what we're going to do today. I wanted to take some time to explain this to, to you so you really get the idea. So we're going, to, we're going to let that one go in a particular way. But first, let's get the reversal off on it. All right. I know sometimes I look good. I know other times I look bad. I don't want anybody to see the bad. I want to hide the bad and be secretive about the bad. I call myself private. But the truth is I'm secretive, and I don't want people to see the bad side of me when I look bad, when I make mistakes, when I say something wrong, when I commit perpetrations, when I do things that are not very resultful. I don't want people to see it because it makes me look bad. And then they won't like me, they won't want to talk to me, they won't want to pay me, they won't want to associate with me, they won't, won't want to speak nice of me, I'll become unpopular, I'll become alone, and people will judge me. And so the least ammunition I give them to judge me, better it is. So I just present to them what I want them to see. It's like a play or a movie, and I edit the movie so they only see what I want them to see. 
There's something that's quite not healthy about that, though, and that is that I'm editing a large portion of my life based upon my own judgment of myself. And that's really not well thought out. Because what I might see of myself that I might consider damning might not be the same thing another would have a problem with. Matter of fact, the idea of me being big enough to say what's on my mind and not hide things and take responsibility might be the very quality they're trying to create. But I admit that I'm posing a lot in life. I want people of the opposite sex and the same sex to see me in a particular way. Rich, powerful, not as a con artist, not as a dupe, not as a foil. I want them to see me as really a cool and wonderful person. But is anybody cool and wonderful all the time? I mean, isn't it human to make a few mistakes? But what might be inhuman is my wanting to cover those up. I could have made it in politics. It's just a whitewash and a cover-up. And how often in politics and in my own life are those whitewashes and cover-ups nearly found out or found out? <sighs> really not a good investment of my energy. I'm not even sure, honestly, if I'm fooling anyone. What I may be doing is putting across, rather than looking good, a definition of a, of a person that's very insecure. <laughs> that really worries about their performance and really worries about being seen. I may be the kind of guy that hires a PR firm to be thought better of rather than just clearing up my actions. You know, I may be putting out a lot of public relations or PR trying to, trying to sanitize my image and all I'm doing is confusing myself and stressing myself out and ultimately looking quite foolish. Would it be interesting if all my attempts to look good really makes me look pretty bad? Because <laughs> only a really insecure person would launder so much of their life. And the first thing to do to confront my insecurity is quit covering it up. That's going to be difficult for me because I pose a lot. And I'm really terrified of people seeing me for what I am sometimes. Sometimes I'm really wonderful. But sometimes I do the dumbest things. Really make errors in judgment. Really do things that are just humiliating. And rather than be humiliated, I'd rather hide them. But I'm not thinking this is such a good idea any longer. I did this as a kid. It seemed to work then to some degree. But as an adult, I don't really think it works. I like to cease and desist on my cover-ups and be open and honest. When I make a mistake, I make a mistake. When I blunder, I blunder. When I misunderstand something, I misunderstand something. It doesn't mean that they miscommunicated. Taking responsibility for my life could be a lot more fun than cover-ups. And I could end up actually being genuine. A genuine person. An actual, come from my own experience person. Wow. Now that's a thought. I could actually come from my own experience with honesty and sincerity and tell the truth. Let the chips fall where they may. Of course, that would induce other people to come, to come as their own selves, not in costume. Let the chips fall where they may, which would induce other persons. Pretty soon, I'd have a group of people who were open and honest about themselves and call each other on it and bust each other when we're covering up. Now, that would be powerful. 
different than everybody agreeing to each other's cover-ups. I'll agree to your cover-up if you agree to my cover-up, if you agree to this guy's cover-up, this girl's cover-up, and then guess what? There's no truth in the whole business. No genuine people home. Nobody home. Just a cover-up machine. I think I want to leave this one behind. This uh, doesn't suit me anymore. Feels old and outdated. Feels like one of the dumbest things I've ever done, actually. If there's anything I should be covering up is that I've done this. But of course, that's what I'm letting go of, so can't do that. I choose to be a, to be a true and honest self. I choose to come from my own experience and to tell the truth. It makes me feel powerful to tell the truth. Open and honesty makes my heart feel good, it makes my heart feel coherent. It makes me feel like I've grown up. Lying, is a, lying and cover-ups are disempowering. I'm not sure I fooled anybody anyway, except myself. And so I'm willing to call it a day on that. And I choose to be honest. I choose to be true to my own intentions. And I choose to bring myself, my authentic self, forward and get out of the closet of delusion and cover-up. I'm coming out of my own way, and guess what? I'm coming out as myself. And that's powerful. I really appreciate your willingness to confront these issues. A lot of people might choose not to do that. It takes courage to do these kind of sessions, but I think it's really worth it. And so, thank you for working with me here today. Revisit this, uh, this video often and work with it until you've completely flattened the pattern. And this is Dr. Norm McVeigh from CoherentCoachingInstitute.com wishing you your honest self and enjoy the bliss and the magic of being yourself. I'll see you next session.